Yeah, so that's what, I, that's what I'm here there. for. Basically, I'm here for is to help answer. I don't want anybody to be shy. I don't care. You can ask me whatever you want to ask. If I can, it's fine. And also Pleiadians. Any of you here that ever heard the term Pleiadian? Okay, that, that supposedly is what I would say brothers and sisters out there. When I say out there, I mean that. They tell me they're uh, from a solar system. You're shaking your head yes. And uh, they're watching us. They're watching the planet because we're killing Mother Earth and we're killing each other. And it's got to stop. And I just got goosebumps. And if you, any of you get goosebumps when I'm talking, that means I'm telling you the truth. And I happen to have a gentleman in the back row here who, who um, a dear friend, he's a dowser. If any of you know what dowsing is, and he'll douse me if he thinks I, if he needs to. So, okay. So, I think I'll just put in a few shameless plugs here because I have people sitting in front of us and we have so much going oh, on I have at the library. Yeah, come, come stand with me, June. Um, so, one really important thing, one very important fundraiser we have is the chili chowder cook-off. And that is not only fun, not only delicious, you come for lunch and for, I don't know if it's like $7, you get a sample of all and then you vote and we have prizes. And that's Saturday, September 9th. So please pull out those recipes and come and cook and vote for folks. Um, we November, are also November 9th, 9th. November 9th. Yeah. That's why I bring, you know, <laughs> things, and then I still can't even read it. We also have, for adults and kids and teens, for everyone, is a pumpkin, decorated pumpkin contest. So you'll decorate at home and bring them to the library. And you can start bringing them in, and on September, uh, October 26th, from 10 to 1, it's a Saturday, we're going to have judging on that. We'll have cookie decorating and fun Halloween festive stuff for the kids. But that's the decorated pumpkin contest. So you do it at home, bring it in, win fun prizes. Trunk and Treat downtown at the Town Hall. We will be set up with the BCTV in their space in the Selectman room. And we will be, as usual, handing out the best treat of all to little children, and that's books. And we have some good books we've been collecting all year, and children walk away with books that they can read and, and, um, and enjoy. So the Mirror of Maine series is a series of six books that are done. Um, they have help us learn the culture of Maine and are um, getting to the bottom of some of the reasons why Maine is so unique. And so we study historically Maine literature from the history, the culture, and some really fun reads this month's read is Salem's Lot by Stephen King. <laughs> and how appropriate is that? <laughs> we will be discussing that book. If you'd like to join us, I can give you the book. Um, and you just sign up. And you can come for that discussion. And you don't have to come to all the discussions, but I recommend it. It's a fantastic group. <coughs> and we will be discussing Salem's Lot on November 12th at 6 p.m. But it's a real Halloween type read. I'm already not sleeping well. <laughs> and I never read Stephen King. I've read one book that Elena made me read, and it wasn't scary. This one's scary. So this brings us to our special guest tonight. June Elaine Evans is here to tell us about her new book. And it is Love After Life. It's the birth of a medium. She, I'd like her to talk about her journey as to how he, she came to be here in the place you're at to be able to have this um, window into something that I, I have been told everyone has the ability to do. Absolutely. Some of us are much better than others. So please, I'm going to have you talk about yourself rather than me try to. So please welcome June. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much.
Thank you, everybody. Thank you. I want you all to know I am from Maine. I fell in love with my husband in Elliott, Maine. So I love the state of Maine. So this, is, this makes me happy to be with you people tonight. Um, yeah, it's not, as you can see, it's not a big, I didn't write this big, thick book. This, this book is written with Jerry, my, my spirit husband. The two of us wrote this book. He had me record everything he was saying to me. So I could hear him about a month after he passed. I just happened to be quiet that one evening. I was laying in bed, just laying there. And this time I wasn't crying, so I was just laying there. And I heard June. I didn't hear the voice, but I heard June. And I thought, OK. <laughs> Next thing I knew, I could hear snapping sounds around my bed, like a, an igniter on a gas stove, <coughs> click, 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 around the bed, and then um, thoughts talking to me, mental telepathy. That's what it was. And so um, I couldn't see anything around the bed, but I just kind of just let that one go for couple of nights and I kept on doing I kept on getting these messages <clears throat> excuse me he was telling me that we we're going to build a bridge he's going to teach me how to communicate with him so what I did is I went to the doctor because I thought I had snapped I really thought I had um, I was crazy I really really thought I was and then the doctor says to me June he said you're not crazy he said but you should find out what you know he said what's the problem just talk to him then that's what he said. Talk to him. So I started taking notes and things that he was giving me, which is <clears throat> mostly what this book is about, because of these are the notes, but yet, what harm? I just figured, what harm? It's better than crying. And I was so damn nosy, pardon my English. <laughs> but I was nosy, I just wanted to see, what is this? And, and I got into the computer, and I typed in, is there life after death? Is there life after death? And you, that my whole world just, whew, oh my gosh. So that's how it got started. Yeah, that's how the whole thing started. He, he took me through two years of teaching me how to trust myself, how to believe in this, that yes, June, I am not dead. What do you call it? He says, the only way that I can explain it is if you see the movie Ghost. What Patrick Swayze went through, Jerry said when he died, he was in my arms when he died, and he said he was that quickly out of the body watching this all going on, saying, what's happening here? And he kept saying, I'm not dead, I'm not dead. He, he said, you know, I, co I couldn't hear him, of course, I couldn't hear him, but yeah. <coughs> That's it. That's how pretty much how this is going to start. This is a love story, people. It's a love story because there's more books coming. And that term, walk in soul, I thought that was insane. But I did my research. And that's what we all should do yeah. here tonight. No matter where you are, if you're on the fence about this, no matter how you feel about this topic, um, you're not going to hurt my feelings at all. I, I can take constructive criticism too. No problem. Just whatever you want to say, you should, you should ask. Go ahead and ask. And the rest of it you can read in the book. Um, if you'd like to. So I'd like to start off with some questions. So yes, I did get through. Hi, honey. <laughs> Jerry, thank you. So that's my hubby. Right away, he asked two things. He said, please light my candle. Yep. So, yes, indeed. He asked me to relax. He said, if you go, he said to get the tissues out. <laughs> Why? I'm not going to stand here and cry, am I? <laughs> no. Okay, I light this candle for my spirit husband, Jerry. And then, it's usually darker at home when I do this. But there it is, and just out of respect for Jerry. Every night for nine years, I've done that. Same batteries, I'm just kidding. Uh, 
So, Jerry, what was the other thing? Oh, okay. So Jerry's saying, <laughs> okay, he has dry wit and humor. If you get it, fine. If you don't, it'll go over. He said, you have a real live ghost here. You have a, he, he's right here with me for now. And um, ask him if you want to ask any questions of Jerry. Here's your chance, right, Glenn? Jerry's here. You know that, and I know it. I can't see him, though. I wonder if anybody here can see spirit. Does anybody here see spirit, or have you ever? Think you have? You do. Can you see my husband with me? No. No, you can't. Okay. All well, right. I, I've seen a few. Okay. D are you afraid of this? I'm not afraid yeah. of him. In the end. I've only seen one orb, and I was amazed at myself after that I wasn't afraid. It came into the room, went around the room. It was blue, and, I, and I'm thinking, oh. I, and I thought, I thought that it's looking. It, well, I said he. I said he's looking for something. And he went out into the hallway, and I followed in the hallway, and of course he's gone. But it was a blue ball, about this big, and it just came. You do realize, everybody, that the veil between the two worlds is, uh, well, from what I got, has been dropped, or it's so thin. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to be living with them <laughs> more and more. What does it mean when you see a spirit? Tissues. And it's like seeing a person. I, I, years ago, I saw someone, her back was to me. I thought it was my sister, and it wasn't. And then another. What's time, your sister's first name? My sister's first name, Nancy. But it, but she wasn't passed, and she's still not passed. Okay. But the person I saw, I thought was her because her back was to me. She had a white nightgown on and she had blonde hair. Okay. But then I found out from my mother, it was at my mother's, that my sister had already gone to school. And and I said, well, who's walking around in the white nightgown? And she says, nobody's here. Well, they are, and you know that. You knew that. A lot of this tonight will be about when you leave here. I hope I will have helped you wake up as to who you really are. You're not going to be the same people that walk in this room when you leave tonight, I hope. I hope, I hope you will leave here with a lot of exciting... Either that, if it's not that, at least some knowledge that Maybe you don't. The way I was brought up, I'm 74. I mean, I'm 74 years old. I'm 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 brought up the old-fashioned way. And uh, back then, it was like when I was eight years old, I saw Jesus at the foot of my bed. I I saw him at the foot of the bed. Of course, it was you could see through, but it was his. I went under the covers, and I never said another thing the rest of my life. I never told my family or anybody the stories like you're telling me. I never told anybody. It's too bad. So that because now these children, that's another group I'd like to talk to. There's children here now, they call them starseed babies. You might be grandparents of these starseed children. A lot of you grandparents know that these children are different. They come here all knowing all-knowing. It's beautiful. They're coming here to help save this planet. We've got to stop doing what we're doing to this planet. And the children know that. They're here to help us. The children talk to the animals all the time. Hi, sweetie. I definitely want to have Amy join me at some point here because uh, I have done gallery readings with Amy and Amy and I are yeah, on this journey, sometimes together, sometimes apart. Um, yeah. Jim, could you talk about your process for pet finding? Your, can you talk about the pets? Like, what, how did you get into that area? And well, I've been talking to the animals since I was again. I was I was a kid, but back then, in the fifties, sixties, who am I going to talk to about it? I just heard this dog say he doesn't want you giving him pills anymore. It hurts his stomach. I don't have 
Who am I going to tell that to? I would, oh. my, no, I'm saying that's what I would hear. hear the dog would say to me, please tell them to stop giving me the pill. And that's another thing today. Animals do not want a lot of drugs in their tummies. They don't like that at all. They want healing. And that's, I also do that. Amy and I both do energy healing. It's called Reiki, everybody. Do you know that term? Okay, I do that. And much rather do Reiki healing on um, a pet any day to help him or her through instead of giving them drugs, please. And how expensive is it to go to a vet? Oh my gosh, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty expensive. Okay, how do I find pets? I'll speak for myself. I have three teammates. They do it all together differently than I do. What I do is I've, I've accumulated 27 guide dogs. And how did I get those guide dogs? Let's say your dog passed. You call me on the phone and say, June, I'd like my dog to join pet detectives, join you in helping find. What that dog has to do is give you evidence that he or she's with you right there in, in 10 minutes or less because I need that kind of an animal to help me. What street is this animal that's lost on? Go ahead, Rocky. By the way, speaking of Rocky, does anybody have a dog here named Rocky? Or somebody that... I used to. Well, Rocky's passed? Yeah. Well, Rocky's here. <laughs> and if I don't say Rocky, <laughs> he's... I'm going to keep hearing this, Rocky. Okay, um... So, yeah, that's how it's done. I work with guide animals on the other side. I have all kinds of animals. I have pet uh, parakeets and cats. I have lots of cats. And that's what we do. We sit down together. You call and say, look, I've lost my dog. I need help. So what I do is after we hang up, I go, go into meditation and just call my guide animals in and say, I need, show me. Now, it's not always possible to find them alive either, everybody. That's kind of a sad thing, but what would you rather know? I mean, what would you rather do? Like I did for 30 years, never knew who stole my dog. I never knew. I, had, I never got over that. I'd rather know, or if, if your animal's passed or what, I'd rather know if somebody comes up and holds my dog in their arms and says, I hit your dog. I'm sorry. But at, at least I can grieve now. Because what my husband taught me, so many things he taught me, one of the things he taught me was, he took me over to his picture. I had a picture on the wall. He says, go over here and look at my picture. I'm looking at his picture. He said, grieve that. Grieve the idea of me. Not, gr grieve the body. Not me. I'm here with you. You know I'm here with you. You can feel me. You can sense me. Hi, welcome. Come on in. Come on in. This chair's up here. Forgive the tissues, everybody, but I get, I can't help it. I get, even though I have this gift, I still get a little emotional, emotional sometimes about this. Hi. Excuse me, everyone. Hi. How are you? <laughs> Stinker. <laughs> I won't tell you. I didn't even honestly see who it was. <laughs> Dear friend, friend of mine also. So there's a few here. Got a few. Where were we? I'm sorry. Looking at the picture of your husband on the wall. Picture of my hus husband on the wall telling me to grieve the body. So that's what, what it's about. He explained that when he passed, it was like he walked he said he, he came out of the body and he walked through, at some point, a door. He opened up the door and he walked through the door and closed it. And he was in another dimension, like. There, people think that they go to heaven and they go, the animals go across Rainbow Bridge and you never, that, that's the end of it. That's just not true. Our animals love us unconditionally. They love us. They're not going to leave us. They'll lay right here. My dog will stay right here with me until I transition. And that's the word Jerry asked me to use. He said, could you say transition instead of dead? 
I said, but people only understand the word dead. So maybe we, you know, it's up to you what you want to use, but he, he, he just said it's, it's the best way is to look at that, watch that movie. So yeah, um, they're around us, they stay with us for as long as they have to. It's, thank you, honey. He just told me it's unconditional love. That's why Jerry's here. This is why he's here with me. He loves me unconditionally. Sometimes that, that's rare. A lot of people don't ever feel that. And they're animals. Our animals love us unconditionally. They're not going to go off. They're going to stay around. So, and I'm glad you're hearing me because this is how I feel. And you can, you can decide, uh, uh, correct me or whatever you want. But I, I feel that they are... Um, Trying, the veil is thinned to the point or dropped. They're, they're trying to get us through by f touching us and feeling us. And I do believe if any of you thought that your cat walked across your chest some night in bed, your cat walked across your chest. <laughs> I felt Jerry kiss me. Am I getting red in the face? Because I feel like I am. Speaking. Well, this is, I didn't expect this tonight. This is, if I had no clue. I, didn't, I just thought I was just going to sit and sign a book. Welcome to Burroway. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe I'm a little, yeah, yes, thank you. Thank you for saying that. That's exactly what's going on with me. When you see my face get red like this, <clears throat> excuse me, usually it's spirit coming through, and I'm, uh, it's energy. It's energy. I'm going to pick, I'm picking this up. I could pick up, I picked Rocky, um, that energy. So my face will get red. Yeah, well, I can't, there's nothing I can do about that. Um, okay, what else do we have for questions? I hope I answered it or didn't I? All of it. Yes. About how I work. Yes, I work with guide animals. My other girlfriend channels her dog that's passed. <coughs> Excuse me, channels her dog. She gets out of the way. She'll sit here in the chair, and her, she moves herself. It's not a possession. <laughs> he doesn't come in and take over, but she just chant, quiets her mind down and then speaks for him. Because, after all, we are their voice, right? We are, we are the voices of our dear animals. They don't have a voice. That's why you'll never stop hearing mine. And a lot of us, I got that as a sign I found on my... my uh, computer. Let's see if I can get something else here. Is there something else that you wanted to say, Jerry? Oh, what? <laughs> he said, how do you like me now? So in other words, because I was asking him questions today about what I should be bringing up here and what I should be doing and uh, none of, he never let on about any of this. So, okay, that's okay. How do you like me now? I still love you, honey. I do. We got a lot of work to do. How long were you and Jerry married? I met him in 1976. Just come out of a divorce of 10 years. Um, I was 20, 29. And he was 23. <laughs> yeah. I knew how old he was. My father told me. He said, you're not going to be dating that man. He's 23. You're, you're too old. <laughs> How did you pass? <laughs> cancer. He had. He uh, found out he had prostate cancer and it metastasized into into the lungs. Yeah. Did you, did you and your husband discuss this? I mean, you, before he passed. Yes, we did. Thank you for asking that. Yes, we did. Oh, you mean the? Me no, we didn't talk about that. We talked about death and dying. Because I knew he was going to die. The doctor told me exactly how long he had. He had less than a month. And I said, we'll see about that. And um, I just knew I could do something else. And I, I integrated this therapy that the, they were giving him. And he lived three and a half years. Wow. Because I had, as I said, good bedside, bedside manner. That's what I have. Yeah, that's what helped him, no, but uh, he, I went to and gave him a lot of things that would uh, 
give him that strength. And I just think just unconditional love to him. But to answer your question, it was 30 years married. We, we dated four years. Four years. And then, so we were married 30 years when he passed. Are so. surprised when your doctor said, you're not crazy? <laughs> that strikes me as a very unusual thing for a doctor to actually accept. Oh, not only did he say that, you should have, <laughs> the other thing he said to me was, you know, June, he said, if you're here for drugs, you're not going to get any. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I do, I need something to sleep. He said, no, you don't need anything to sleep. Just research and find out what's going on with you. You're, he said, you're not crazy, June. I know you. He's known me for over 20 years. He said, just figure out what's going on with you. And he said, besides, what's a harm doing to talk with him? If you can hear him. And he kept saying to me, uh, please record everything you can hear me say. And I'll tell you, the first guest, here she, she's here too. I just felt you come in. Thank you. <laughs> can you see who's with me? Can you feel who's with me? Lady Diana is here. That's the first guest that Jerry brought through to me. I was dancing one night doing freestyle dancing because I've, I've been on weight loss program. That's why I can't button this blouse tonight. But I hope that I'll see you people again. And the next time I see you, I'm buttoning this blouse. <laughs> this is, see? I only have just that much more. <laughs> so yeah, Lady Diana, thank you for coming. She said yes. She, oh, she's going to help. She's going to help me find. Uh, okay. She, yeah, all right. She's going to help find animals too. So if any of you, any of you ever have uh, pets that have passed and you want them to join Pet Detectives International, when I say international, around the world we find animals. Why, why can't we? Do you see, so there's this little picture somebody hung in our lobby, uh -huh. and it's at the post office, and I forget the name of it, the pet, Tuxedo, and I've been looking at, like, can you just walk by and say, I know where Tuxedo is, and sit, help these poor people that have had this cat? Okay, I can't see, I can't see him, but, but Tuxedo will tell me where he is. Like Jerry told me, he's sitting here for now, until I, if I want to sit down. Yes, I will, hon. I Would will. Do you want me to get Jerry a chair? <laughs> Another chair? No. Not to, not, not to, no. We <laughs> you, he, he's like, oh, you can sit on my lap. Yeah. <laughs> Did you get that? <laughs> no, I'd rather, I'd rather keep the energy moving. I feel like if I walk back, and, and actually, J now I get what Jerry's been doing all this time. <laughs> At home, every night we have happy hour. Every night he and I talk about the business or whatever it is I have for questions and he'll say to me, pretend you have an audience in front of you. That didn't scare me because there's nobody in my house. Okay, well now he says when you're, when you're with the audience, make sure you look at people in the back and look and then walk and talk to them and come on over and you can even like come up this way so you can feel more. That's what he did. I thought it was a game, and here I am. He also told me I'd be on television nine years ago. He told me, he said, you'll be on television someday. He said, and also, you'll have your own radio show. I said, that's crazy. I'm a housewife and a mother, and uh, I don't have any education for television or anything like that. I have my own radio show. Children have imaginary friends. Maybe some of you as children had uh, imaginary friends. So, is it really imaginary? That's a hard one. <laughs> Would you like to? <clears throat> Can you? Yeah. You cheated. You went and got dressed up. <laughs> I was in my work clothes. <laughs> can, yeah, she can answer that beautifully. Uh, Stand next to her, please. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, you're supposed to I'm speak really into here. So, um, imaginary friends. Um, there, there are two sides of imaginary friends. A lot. Some Whoops. are spirits that are communicating with us, and the children. We 
call them imaginary friends. Um, if they're sprites or fairies or things like that, um, I personally don't believe that it's a fairy tale. <laughs> um, we have labeled them as fairy tales. So children are the most open than all of us. We come into this world very open and can hear and, and communicate. Um, as we get older, we shut that down. So if a child is, has an imaginary friend, then in my opinion, that, that's their friend. And whoever that is, a spirit, it could be an animal, it can be a sprite or a fairy. Fairy, absolutely. Um, I, have, I, I have video of it, so. Um. <laughs> Children, especially, the, they, they, they don't know how to lie yet. They don't know how to lie a lot. What do, you, what do you have video of? I have a video of a fairy. Of a fairy? Mm -hmm. I know this sounds strange, but when I you see it, I know, I know what that means. So I have a stone. It's a big. I'm wearing one now, but I have a big one that's about this big. And on the new moon, I was photographing, and the light was coming through, and there is a fairy that moves around, and I have it on video. And if you'd like to see it, I'd be happy to show it sometime. Who reads <laughs> Sir Arthur Conan Doyle here? Anybody read Sir Arthur Conan Doyle? because he's here too. <laughs> he's one of my guides. I love him. I adore him. And I, 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 can, I can channel with him a little bit, but when I do, it's, oh, don't even, it's not a problem, dear. Just stand there and look beautiful. You're fine and blah, 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 blah. I love him. He's smart. Thank you. Thank you, hon. He's a wonderful man. Okay, let's see. Did we answer your question? Okay, you're welcome, and thank you for asking. You I just want to add to that one. I have a seven-year-old grandson. Um, and oh. A couple of months ago, he informed me that he has a fairy that's with him all the time, and he has a name. Bob. My grandmother thinks he's nuts, but I know better. You know, oh, yeah. He, he, he knows his name and everything else. Yeah, he's a fairy. He's a Bob, shoulder. can you come up here, please? So... Thank you, hon. <laughs> so how long have I known your son, grandson? Oh, five, six years now. Five he's or seven. six years? <laughs> he's seven, so as long as he's been around. When I first met him, what was he, three? Probably three. Yeah. He took my hand. He came over with him. He said, June, I think I'd like to have you talk to, to him about, because he's talking about things and saying things, and he believes. He's a great, great man. This man is an awesome. He believes... He's a healer, too. Yes, he is. His hands get warm. And if I have a problem, I say, oh, my shoulder hurts. He says, where's it hurt? And he'll go, he's right there? And he'll keep his hands right there for me. So he's, uh, he's funny about that. <laughs> so so we've been watching him grow, everybody, since he was three. Yep. Oh, he kid. took me by the hand and took me. He, he left his grandfather sitting up. And he took me by the hand. He says, come here, I want to talk to you. And he took me into my bedroom. And we sat on the bed, and I said, Bob, I'm leaving the door open. <laughs> so, yeah, we sat on the bed and had a chat. And I love working with children. I love working with the children. I love them. They're awesome. Yeah. yeah I know, he's a great kid. And uh, just one other thing, um, June has her radio show, and we talk a lot every once in a while. And she says, you know, this, this service dog came through, a shepherd. And, and this name, Chelsea, a dog, Chelsea, a, a shepherd came to him. Do you know a dog named Chelsea? I, I fell on the floor. So, yeah, <laughs> that's my wife's dog, Chelsea, German Shepherd. So Chelsea was brought to the service dogs with bricks. He was a uh, police dog. So that's the connection, boom, boom. And I mean, what's the odds? Service dog or Chelsea? No. Don't what forget. channel is the uh, radio show? It's a blog talk. It's off the computer. My okay. studio is actually on the computer. So if we just, if somebody Googled your name, that would... It's called Bridge Between Two Worlds. I actually brought, what Jerry told me tonight was, I brought paper. I don't know if anybody wants, does anybody need paper for information if you want to write things down? What are you doing over there, honey? You want to sit out here? No? You have any questions? No? Okay. I have a question. 
I am, um, I feel like I am being held back from my body during sleep. Okay. Would you like to answer that one, Matt? Please walk by. Go for it. I'll have marks on my body. Okay, I am so glad you brought this up. Thank you, thank you for coming out with a question like that. Thank you. Okay. Um, what well, some people may prefer it, to call it sleep paralysis, maybe. Um, I've worked with a lot of people that have that, and what it is is it's um, it's almost like a fear state for you to open up. Um, the spirits have chosen you because you're a light. It's almost like the light bulbs are on and they can see the light bulbs, okay? So it might be a fear um, out from you, it might be from a past life um, that you've done this and, and maybe was prosecuted or something like that. But you also have a choice. So if it's not something that you want to progress with, I would certainly want you to work with somebody that knows what they're doing on both sides of the fence. If you want to open it more, then you know, work with someone to open it more, or I'm, work with I'm someone to close it down. Because I'm, I'm very open, so I'm. I'm surprised oh, oh no, I that's very common. Being terrified and terrified, and not know what I'm terrified about. Right, and but, that. And, yeah. but I'll wake up on my body, and I'll have scratches, and my wife will say, "How did you get scratches?" Or I'll say, "How did I get scratches?" Where do you and live? She said, "You were Rochester." She said, you're, you were scratching in your sleep. And I yeah. might have been scratching in my sleep, but I know, I feel like before I came back into my body, somebody was trying to hold me back from getting back to my body. Okay. So and I always feel like it, this is going to just sound crazy, um, like for me. paranoid, but I feel like they're after me. Okay. Like okay. They, Can they, I? Like I'll, they, I'll write. They need me, or they they want me. They're after me. Okay. Fear. You you have work to do if you want to get in this exciting. <laughs> fear. You're you're fear based. They can feel that. They mm -hmm. they can actually feel that. I've never been hurt by spirit. Have you? I've never been hurt. I wouldn't say I have personally, but I've been around a lot of yeah. what she's talking about and what it is is, yes, there are other spirits of dark nature that want to, because you're strong in your spirit, and they will try, but you can shut that down. So. And I'm an cool. artist, though. I also channel while I make art. So, I mean, my way of channeling. I'm just connected. I'm not a, I'm not a psychic or that I know of. I'm not... but. When I create art, I feel things come through me. That's awesome. Do you have a pen with you, hon? I don't. I have one. Take down, um, here, here's some paper. Put down um, the possibility of you taking some classes from me. Spirit Academy, it's called. It's three classes about half hour 45 minutes whenever you want it can be once a month it can be uh, once a week okay I mean you, like I say you you have these gifts they're beautiful you just need to hone them and definitely work on letting go my, my husband said to me was let go and let God I'm getting something around the land you're living on, where we live. Mm -hmm. There's something there. There's something. It used to be a um, landfill. Okay. And it also used to be the Rochester Fairgrounds. Okay. I don't know. Ah. It's coming from the land. So it's not someone coming after you. It's in the land. I have to remember to stand next to you because you're talking into okay. my. See that? Okay. <laughs> so um, does that make sense? That's what I was sensing also, that this is a new thing, and that's why I saw it's not literally the house, it's the land. It's the land where that is. Um, a land clearing, you can get someone to do land clearings. We both do that. Yeah. Um, but that would, that's where I would start, because um, that's, that's... That's interesting. We just had a, a tree on the yard just die. 
And then my cat. It needs serious, to be clear. Yes, you need a clearing. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Nothing that isn't doable. It's all right. good. It's all good. It's all you good. You came to the right place. Okay. Yeah, you did. Okay. This is exciting. Yeah, I saw the sign. Okay. Really exciting. <laughs> By the way, that should say, I don't, it says Duna Lane. Yes, my name is Duna Lane, but I am the New Hampshire medium, everybody. I, didn't know that. I had to pay $50 for that. <laughs> and I had to earn it, too. Yeah, why not? Because when I went down to New Orleans, they, this lady came out and she said, are you that New Hampshire medium? And I thought, hey, I like that. Yeah, I'm the New Hampshire medium. <laughs> yeah, I am. Why not? You've got the Long Island medium. Should we tell them how, how we met in our little story? Go ahead, hon. So I met June at a fair. I met June at a fair. Like at a fair. A fair. Yeah. No affairs. A fair. So, and I was drawn to her, so I went over and I talked to her, and she gave me some evidence. Um, I had been in the closet for a long time, <laughs> and she had given me some evidence, and we had, um, making a long story short, but we started communicating with each other, and um, one day I brought my husband over to her house. We were going to have a meeting together. And he looked at the picture on the wall that she was describing earlier. Oh, my God. This is going to make me cry. Yeah, I forgot all about it. Now I need the tissues again. I'm sorry, guys. Go ahead, hon. So my husband asked who that was on the wall. Oh. And she said, that's my husband, Jerry. That's who I communicate with. And he said, did he work at Novel Lion Works? My husband and her husband worked together in life for 30 years. <laughs> what is that called, everybody? It's called a synchronicity. It's not a... Uh, coincidence is old-fashioned anymore. The word coincidence, it's not a coincidence. It's not a coincidence that you're all here. This is synchronized. This is all synchronized for so your... we're going to synchronize everyone coming to the chili chowder. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Okay. Sorry. No, that's okay. We'll, <laughs> we'll put it out in the ethers. But there you go. That's that was we were supposed to get. Now she and I. I haven't seen you for what? Not in person for a while. We've talked on the phone. But yeah, we haven't but seen you, so. probably a year. Yeah. That's why I got a little emotional when I saw you come in. <laughs> and that guy right there, I love him dearly. He's a good man. And Glenn, yeah. We're gonna come up to the dowsing meeting. Go ahead. Mention the word past lives. Thank you, Wayne. Yes. Do we all have past lives? It feels like I've lived before. And it comes back to me. Absolutely. My and, and because you're you're waking up. You're waking up. Um, for example, like I knew I knew that I was on the Trail of Tears. I knew that, and also Egyptian ties I have. They used to call me, it's interesting, in high school, they used to call me a lot of names, but um, <laughs> one of them was Cle Cleopatra, because I used to wear, back in the 60s, I used to wear a lot of makeup when I was younger, you know, like Cleopatra, and, and they used to call me Cleopatra, but I kept, my, I, my body wanted to, I wanted to, because I felt I was somehow connected. I'm not saying I was Cleopatra, I'm just saying I was connected to Egyptian ties. Native American big time in here. Also, who's got the land here? Who's sitting here on a, a sizable piece of land? Who owns some nice land? A two acres. <laughs> okay. Because I'm hearing sacred space. You understand what that is? Sacred space. You'll know it. Well, when, when I met my husband, uh, it was ironic that we were supposed to meet. And uh, the first night I spent at the house, I'm thinking, what am I doing here, you know? And then I could smell his dad's cigar or, and, or pipe. Anyway, I smelled it during the night. His father's been gone for 20 years. When we got up in the morning, I said, your father smoke a pipe? I could smell that. And uh, the other thing was his name. Uh, 
match my first husband's name. His middle name was the same as my first husband. Oh. It's just like it was supposed to happen. Yeah. He told me I'd better be here. Sometimes I wonder why I'm there, but <laughs> I'm supposed to be there. <laughs> Absolutely. So that kind of helps me. Uh, so what you want to do is find somebody, if you want to have uh, a, uh, do you know who does past life regression? I know a few people who do, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I brought a little black book tonight with me, because that's what my hubby said to do. He said, bring a book, I was going to put, um, anybody that wants to leave their name and or number or whatever information so we can not lose touch. So you can keep keep in touch with me. Do you do Facebook at all? Oh yeah. <laughs> well, then friend me, June Elaine Evans. Yeah. I'll June do Elaine that. Evans, and let's get friended so that you can see what I'm up to. Okay, I'll do that. And listen to the blog talk radio. Really yeah. My mother named me after Pat, uh, Patricia Neal, so my name is Patty Bennett. Awesome. Well, I hope I hope that I we can do. Th All right, let's keep the questions coming. We have got more, I'm sure. Yeah. I have a question. So I believe in reincarnation as well, but I know that people stay with their family, their loved ones after they transition. When do they get reborn? After so many generations, or like how is that? Well, that's <laughs> tricky. That's tricky. It is, but but. For you, um, I would look up the words walk in souls. Anybody tonight that's interested about, I can tell you that I, he, I'll tell you what I was told. Because um, I'm going to get ready to write a book on it and I've already had it happen to me. In fact, this group will be the first group to hear because I haven't been telling anybody any of this. I'm going to share it with you all because you came out to see me tonight. And you're helping hold me together. Thank you. Because uh, I'm a little bit nervous. My husband told me that he was coming back to me. It was like I was laying in bed again <laughs> one night and I'm laying there and I felt him next to me. And he started to describe this man. And he said, I'm coming back to you. And I said, how? He said, a walk-in. Well, I had to get up and go look that up. So look up walk-in souls because apparently this gentleman that I'm going to bump into at some point in time is a widower and he wants to be on the other side with his wife. And my husband wants to be here with me. So they've got this contract supposedly and and when an 11 year old grandson runs up over the stairs all excited and says to me Nana, you aren't going to believe what Grandpa just told me because he can see and hear his grandfather. He says, Grandpa just told me he's coming back. To, he's coming back. I said, he did? He said, yeah. I says, well, how is that possible? He says, well, I'm not really sure. He says, but I think his soul, I think this man's soul is going to leave the body and his soul is going to come into the body. So as far as how long and all of that, I mean, look it up. I mean, as far as... Do you have an answer for her um, question? Well, in my experience so far, <laughs> um, Come here, hon. you can have, you know, spirit attachments from other lives as well as people from this life. So you might feel um, some, have you ever met anyone and had like an instant connection and you just don't know why? That's because you were kindred your kindred spirits is kindred souls. That's what that means. It means that you've been in another lifetime with this person before and you recognize each other. The word namaste means I see you. I see the light in you. So um, you take all of that, you know, and in, in loved ones, for instance, for me, I see dead people, okay? Um, <laughs> but for me, um, it's harder to see my own loved ones because of my own emotions and my own... So I hear my mother. I smell my mother more than I see her. Um, when you were saying you smell, that's the biggest thing for me is I smell and I can see places if they want evidence. For me, with you guys, I kept seeing the ground, you know, and there's certain evidential things that go in my mind that I, you know, just come out of my mouth. 
Um, but when, when I have, like I have a few kindred spirits, you know, our, our meeting, you know, how, what are the odds of, of <laughs> that? I mean, 30, 30 years these two have worked together and I never met her before. And now here we are in this, in my world, in my psychic world, and he's coming with me. And, and he knew him. I mean, that was a moment I'll never forget. Um, you know, so that was that meeting in, in this lifetime. And Jerry having fun with us. Um, Popcorn. Jerry yeah. always, always has fun with us. Oh, my gosh, yes. The train whistle he loves to blows. The train Her whistle. Name. We actually had, we bought a caboose, a Boston to Maine caboose, and we restored it and uh, hooked up with a bunch of people up in Tilton, New Hampshire. And um, 10 years of beautiful fun in that caboose. But that's how Jerry talks to me. Is if I, I know if I'm thinking something or I'm thinking of June or I'm thinking of something and yeah. a, and a um, train blows, it's either validation for me, he's saying yes. Or, That's right. You know, it's, a, it's usually what it means for me is validation. See, yeah, they yeah. set it up. I don't know. I asked him to please explain more about that. And he said, um, I wouldn't understand the like it's, it would be like a foreign language how yeah. they do that. But it's almost like. He already knows what I. He already knows all about this. I've been here and I've done this, and and he knew that. But then he'll set up something. I don't know. It's just interesting how that all comes together. But let's keep going on the questions. I keep coming to you, sir. I, can, can I ask you your first name? Mine. Yes. Ron. Ron. Okay. He's so what? He's fun. You don't have anything to do with trucks, do you? I drive one. I mean, but not a like a, yeah, but. <laughs> I'm just trying to see if I can pick up on something. You have a pet that passed? I uh, don't know. Well, not about four years ago. Okay. Well, this, still, he, this yeah, is a male? I've had pets that have passed. Okay, do you ever feel them in the truck? Well, after tonight, you will. <laughs> was never in the truck before. <laughs> it's all right. Very possible. There's something more about you. Amy, if you pick up anything on this gentleman, I'll keep going with questions. What else do we have? Just hang in there. Go ahead. Uh, when you were talking about children with um, imaginary friends, both my son and my daughter had imaginary friends that were animals. And named them or whatever. But my, I have a grandson, um, he's four and a half, and um, my daughter had a miscarriage last December. I'm and sorry. my daughter was telling me that um, he mentioned one day about, you know, he was looking off in the distance and just kind of like, you know, focusing on something, and he said he saw his sister. That's right, he did. And I'll tell you why I'm saying that. And he's autistic. Uh, that's a, because when children pass, or this miscarriage is a they, okay, hold on just a second. Hold on, everyone. Hold on. Let me finish this. They grow up on the other side. Yes, I, okay. Does anybody, has anybody heard of a, of a little girl who was murdered in 1984 named Tammy Belanger. Yes. Okay, I just got a lot of goosebumps. She's here with me now. <coughs> Tammy Belanger, so she wants you to know um, that she is, uh, she grew up on the other side with the help of grandparents and she said she got to meet Jesus. And by the way, she said to tell you, Jesus does not look like the pictures that we, he does not. He looks more like this man right here. I'm just kidding. I'm just having fun with you. There's something, did you, ha you have a brother? You have a brother? Is one of those brothers look a lot like you? Almost like a twin? Well, my two older brothers are twins. Okay, so twin. There you go. I think you're very interesting. I'd love to give you a reading. <laughs> It's amazing that you said Tammy Belanger because my my cousin's 
best friend was Tammy Belanger's brother. Well, I was told to say it, hon. And, and I, I just was told to bring I that up. I think of her often because she said she's my daughter. And, and, um, I got a file on Tammy. She's still out there. You know, well, she is yeah. still out there, but I wondered if she was still with them. I don't think that they ever really found out. No, but she did tell me how she was murdered and uh, who murdered her. And that the police had him. The police had him and let him go. So anyway, I put that file away because I wasn't ready for that yet. But I, I have, um, there is a person that came to me from New Orleans. Uh, he was a police officer. And um, this lady said, can you bring through my friend Troy, his name is. And I said, well, give it a try. She says, well, he's committed suicide. And I said, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. So uh, first thing he said to me was, I did not commit suicide. He said, I did not. And then he said, I was murdered. And then he told me his wife murdered him and that there was an affair. So I said to this woman, I said, put that, don't tell anybody that I... <laughs> You can get my, I don't want to get in any trouble here, but that's what I heard. So put it in an envelope, write it down, and put it away. Five days later, she called me and said, June, they just arrested his wife for his murder. She's still sitting in, in jail a year and three months now. Come on. But, uh, yeah, I, I started getting closer to people, to murders of animals and things like that. And, well, I do want them to have justice. I do want to work on some of these cases. I do, but, uh, yeah. Uh, all right, what else do we have? We're sucking up. We have a present for Jerry. Oh. Oh. Thank you. My husband had popcorn every single night. <laughs> Every night. This dear lady right here, her name is Lori. Her son passed. Lori, do you want us to give a little story about your son or and how we met her? Um, well, I, wanna, I wasn't supposed to have kids with me tonight, but they're here, so maybe that's... I'm fine. so glad. Um, uh, so mother. is this his niece? Yes. So you see Uncle Walter? Well, good for you, honey. I wish I could see, but I can't see them. As Uncle Walter is here with me tonight, isn't he? I know he is. The day that he passed, um, he was at the hospice center, and his sister was there. And I had the, the kids. And she came up to me, and she said, Should I, I don't want Uncle Walter to go, but come God's with me, making hun. a spot for Why him. is everybody shorter than me? That's good. <laughs> You're going to talk. Good. See this right here? I don't want to. Come on, honey. <laughs> and on. she said, I don't want Uncle Walter to go, but God's making a spot for him. And I said, well, if he's got, I don't want him to go either, but if he's got to go, that's the party place. It's the place to be. So it was very difficult. Um, he was a larger than life, six foot eight guy. And this was his, as he called her, little weasel. So, um... She is the one that will see colors and can hear him at night. And Good they girl. would have conversations. So Good. I'm learning a lot from this one and this one. Thank you, hon. Thank you for sharing that. How old was Walter when he passed? I was so wrong for three years. He was 34, not 33. 30. Thank you, honey. 37. All righty. I don't even know what time it is. Is it flying by? I'm sorry? It's okay. I would like to know if there is a reason, my cat just recently passed, if there is a reason why I keep seeing clothing in the shape of her body. It, am I just an artist in strange? Or, I mean, I just keep, I, I, I see... I felt her leave the house, but I keep seeing her in the middle of the night sort of stretching, and 
in the places that I would normally That's see. why I say the veil between the two worlds is thin to that point where we all got to get used to, we're going to live with them. So I see, I see clothing just like tossed yeah. on the side. Believe it. It makes me feel like it's Believe it. a shell of her, her body, like she is just manifesting. Her way of throwing the energy in your artistic, so right. you're going to see it. There's way. so many ways that um, spirit tries to reach us. They can, they can actually pick things up, just like in the movie Ghost, where he had to learn to kick the can and pick up a penny. And Jerry has taken things from me many times <laughs> and hid them on me. Um, I just felt like Walter wanted to say something. I'm not surprised. He thinks this is funny. Of course he does. He, he, I can't, I, Oh, I want to say something so bad, but not in front of these people. <laughs> I, I'll tell you what I'll do it this way. He said he's laughing his as off. I'll say as, A-Z-Z -Z off. He thinks, he thinks it's funny that I'm up here and I can't do a thing about it because I made a commitment. But I am, sh I am shy. I don't want to be up here in front of a camera. <laughs> I thought I was just going to sit down and sign books. <laughs> okay, he said, get over yourself. That's what he just said. Get over yourself. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah, he said, he, did you trip on the way out? To, did you trip today? Did you almost fall? I don't think so. Okay. No. Did you trip? Are you taking a trip? No, I wish. <laughs> well, you just be surprised. With, uh, it's not about, maybe I have that wrong, but it said something about, he just said something about, oh, oh, okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. He said his mother's a trip. <laughs> he said you, are, you're a trip. Yeah, he's something already. Thank you, thank you, uh, Walter, thank you. A trip, okay. Oh, I thought I was going somewhere. <laughs> so the two of you are like Abbott and Costello yes. or something. It's like well, you're sure. twin flames. I'm five one. He was six eight. So <laughs> I don't care. You're twin flames, that mother and son. Yes, son. Speaking of that, all right, all right. Go ahead, everybody. Go ahead. Everybody's <laughs> like they want to say something. They want to say something. Okay. They want you to understand that there are some of you in this group are called light workers. Do you know what a light worker is? So please look that up. Light workers. Light workers spread love. How do you explain to, uh, what a light worker is? Well, exactly what you're feeling. So a light worker is able to feel sense. They're sensitive. Even in, some, in, in the sleep paralysis part, it's like them pulling you in so you can experience something. So you're just going to let go of the fear and allow it to happen or to completely shut it down. You have the choice. Um, but again, working with someone will really help you. Um, a light worker is also, they work with the land, they work with animals. Um, you may work with multiple or just one. Um, you, I know for me, it, it's almost like you have another system in your head. Um, a lot of mine has to do with the sense of smell. Um, I'm an aromatherapist, so there you go. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I see things, a lot of times I'll see places, like that will be, um, you know, validation that I have your loved one with me, that only you would know, I would have no idea of. That's how it works for me. Um, June and I have worked together, we work differently, but yet we can really um, spiral well together. So. Mm -hmm. Thank you, hon. <clears throat> One of the things that's happening to me right now is my hands are heating up like crazy, so I don't know who in this group is in pain tonight, a little pain. Anybody? Anybody have any issues with their, any arthritis or anything like that? Would you like to, can I ask you to come sit here and let me do a demonstration of what I do for healing? Okay, thank you. I'm also hearing pain here in the chest, like a heartache, 
heartbreak? Does somebody feel heartbroken here? Okay. You can let everybody know what you're feeling. All right, does everybody else understand what chakras are? You need to keep those clean. Somebody here, you need to keep them clean. Can you feel that heat? Mm -hmm. Was that a train whistle? It was. So do you do you mind sharing what it is, the pain that you're feeling? Um, I have osteoarthritis. I have it Arthritis. all through my arm, my shoulders, my hands. I've already had a total knee replacement. Oh, Lord. A broken toe. <laughs> okay. So we're going to do, a, I'm going to do a little bit of healing right here with you. And then I'm going to touch your shoulders, but I ask permission first. So, okay, we can keep taking questions or... Okay, I just heard an apple for the teacher. Who's, who's the teacher that's here? We have a teacher here? I'm a paraprofessional with special needs children. There we go. All right, so you I would love to get a hold of. I would love to talk to you more about the children. They're, they're gifted. Um, do you know that? Do you notice any of the children there that are? Oh, there's far more than what other people see in them. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Well, they're called rainbow children, mm -hmm. crystal children, or indigo children. <coughs> this little girl over here. She's going to be very carefully watched over by her uncle. That's why he shows her. She's not, uh, she's, she's not going to be afraid or anything like that are you oh so you you're lucky so you also talk with the archangels do you talk with the archangels archangel michael archangel raphael they're pretty big they they're pretty pretty tall and um, you'll know them let me know if 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 you if you ever see something like that because they're going to come to you, hon. That's awesome. Yeah. Um. I have a couple of things centered around my mother. Um, as a small child, the only thing I ever wanted was to have babies. Okay. That was, and I promised my mother, I'm going to give you babies. I'm going to give you grandchildren. That's my gift to you. As it turned out, I've never had my own biological children. I had taken in a child at 13 months old and raised her as my own. Um, Bless you. And I've always felt, that just one day it just kind of happened in my head that there's a reason I've not had my own biological children. One was because of what I do for work that I've given to many children over the years. The other thought was, okay, well, either it, it's partially that, it's partially because it's either a past life or a life to come that I will have my own children. I don't know where, which one that is, but it just kind of came in my head one day. The other thing focusing with my mother was when I was about 10 years old, she um, was given iodine for a test. She was allergic to it, flatlined on the table, and had an out-of-body experience. And she's in her mid to late 70s now, and she's of sound mind, but she doesn't really remember all the details that she told us back when this had happened to her. And one of the things she had said was that she floated above her body, she saw the entire room, she heard the doctors and the nurses calling her name, telling her it's not time to go yet. And she kind of floated up to the ceiling and then everything just kind of disappeared. It was very dark, the most peaceful place she's ever been. And then either she thought it or a thought came to her, I still have a little girl at home to take care of. Meaning me. 
But when I talk to her about it now, she has no recollection of that. Mm -hmm. And I have a huge fear of that. What did I say earlier? Let's change that around, please. Okay, let's, let's do this, hon. Don't ever tell that story again. <laughs> say to yourself when you leave tonight, I shared that story and with Junie and all these people. It's the last time I tell that story. I let it go now. I'm going to let that go. And don't use the word fear because if, if you ever, I don't know, I'd like to come back again and have the same group. There's so much I really want to say. But well, and that center of Laura and my mother. I can okay. other people going and they don't like it, but it doesn't get back to me like this. Mm -hmm. my mother. Okay, okay. So you would need some, ex absolutely some healing energy, that's for sure. Some healing energy. But we, we get our minds cluttered and we take on things. Now that you shared this, how are you feeling right now? How are you feeling? Because I'm sending you some love. I'm sending you some love and healing. It's all right. My husband was telling me about that because I kept trying to hold tears back all the time. So I wish you'd take some information from me, anybody that wants to tonight, and, and also Amy. She'd be perfect for a lot of you here to help. She's got education that I, I don't have all that. I'm just doing the animals, so. How are you feeling? Very relaxed. Okay, and are you feeling anything else? Can you, can you share um, any tingling, any, any, a little, I just, I feel like a lot of the discomfort has just lifted. Um, That's what I wanted to hear. I wish I had you on the Reiki table. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, honey. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Okay, hon. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming and being with me. Thanks. Thank you, honey. Thank you. Love you, too. All right. There's got to be more questions. Go ahead. Um, have you ever heard of what's called the vanishing twin syndrome? Well, let me, let me explain. Elvis Presley had a twin, and he didn't come to fruition, and he called him Jesse. And he always felt terribly guilty, at least what I've read, that he survived in this twin it, and they also associate with left-handed people. I mean, by the end of here, probably there's two or three people in here who are left-handed that's associated with this vanishing twin. I've done a lot of research on it and get into it. Yeah, yeah, it's fascinating. Fascinating. Very so good. I think that was more of a statement. <laughs> I love it. Thank you. You're, you're definitely, I appreciate that. Somebody over this way. Yep. Is, uh, is uh, uh, Arthur Conan Doyle still here? Yes, he is. <laughs> He's got a pipe. Does anybody smell that pipe tobacco? There's a little controversy, Sherlockian controversy, uh, concerning the uh, the uh, what's the name? Oh, it's called the uh, the, the, the the Dancing Men. The, uh, the it's a short story called Dancing Men, about which is the proper uh, character for the letter T. Do you, does he? Remember that. <laughs> and where are you going? So your question is. Well, it, it's just it's about been a controversy about which is the proper character. There's like a couple of different positions. These it's old pictures. These old dancing men. Okay. And I'm just wondering whether it's the you know he, if he could tell us what was correct since he, he, uh, he miswrote that thing originally. Oh, no, I'm not getting anything like that from him. Okay. Sorry, hon. Yeah. I'm sorry. Maybe neither one of them are correct. <laughs> Maybe he doesn't want to tell about doesn't the dancing. Die. That doesn't mean I won't get one. It doesn't mean I won't, but, but um, he appreciates you asking. 
because... You tell me, you might, he wrote some pretty good stories. Absolutely. Well, guess what he's doing now? He's trying to get me to write, with, do a book with him. Arthur, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle is teaching me how to be a detective. <clears throat> he doesn't always want me to wear my medium ship cape and my healing, uh, my um, animal communication. He wants me to learn to dig in, be more of a detective as well use that so there was a lady back <laughs> yes thank you for coming back here um hi carrie <laughs> i have a friend here too. um why are you apart mm -hmm. i don't know i didn't know she was here when i came in <laughs> glenn what are you doing back there <laughs> i know you're dowsing me no. okay um my husband died in 2011 of pancreatic cancer. And I wanted to be with him when he died, and I was. Um, when, when he was passing, friends were all around, um, and they would get the morphine ready, and one friend would give it to him. When he left, another one gave it to me to, to give to him. And so he'd go, like he wanted to kiss. So I gave him kisses. and. When he passed, they came to get his remains, and my friends ushered me right out the door. And we looked up. I didn't see it, but a friend of mine said, Cheryl, look up in the sky. Mm -hmm. And there was a perfect X, huge X. And they said it was Clady's last kiss. And I've been seeing things like that. Um, and maybe it's me wanting to... But no, I've it seen isn't. These vapors in X's. I've been seeing the time 222, 444, 1111. And I've heard that that is. The, I never have heard him speak. I've never really. don't think I've felt him. Same that, with my mother. Well, that's okay because he, that's why Spirit Academy, what I teach people how to communicate, you don't need, you don't need me. You don't need me as a medium to reach your loved ones and talk to your loved ones. One, one, one. Jerry taught me this. One, one, one means I'm on the right track. When I see that, that means keep going, you're on the right track. Three, three, three means yes, and four, four, four means no. That's how he talks. Um, eleven, eleven. These are the. This is what they're pretty universal. They're using those numbers to get in touch with us. Yeah. Absolutely. The in the sky are very special because I was seeing them a lot, and I, I swear I was, I saw one, I was in the car, and I was driving to where I would be turning left, and when I turned left, it turned into a cross. That's beautiful. It angle, but it was, it turned into a cross. And You'd I be surprised them. at how they can do, they can do so many yes. things. And I feel very blessed, I feel like. Can't you feel your husband kissing you on your left cheek? Have you, haven't you ever felt a, like a graze? He said the left cheek. He's this saying is, left cheek. His cheek's getting well, warm right now. I know it's <laughs> Okay, so, well, all right. The left cheek. Yeah. Yeah. That's what he's doing. He's right there. Are you sleeping in a twin bed, may I ask? No, and I went to a smaller bed from what we had. When he okay, so it's a smaller. It's a queen. He said you can go as small as you want. He can still get in there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's what he said. He's fun. he's a fun man, actually. Oh, yeah, he was fun. yeah, he's he's a character. What I would call is a character. Oh my gosh, isn't he? Yeah. I see it. I mean, I call them people too. I don't call them. Yes, I heard that. They said I wish they. Okay. Don't call us ghosts. He said, they, they're telling me it's like nails going down a chalkboard. We're not ghosts. Okay, what else do we have? It seems to me that a lot of this is tied in with a religious background. So what I'm wondering is, if you don't have a religious background, do you know any mediums or who don't have religious backgrounds who don't have the points of reference you know, with saints and, and archangels and, you know, all that. Well, I was brought up uh, Protestant. I have a lot of Catholic girlfriends that are now rethinking their religion, too. <laughs> um, 
and uh, I'll be honest, I didn't, even though I was brought up Protestant, I didn't believe in archangels and I didn't believe in a lot. I, there's a lot of things I just didn't believe. I mean, I knew Jesus, I, I believed in Jesus and God and, uh, or source, they call him, but yeah, I don't personally know of anybody who, okay, thank you, hon. All right. My husband Jerry just said that he used to make fun of the Bible. He, he, used to, he was made to go to church, excuse me, um, what do they call that for the children? No, um, well, for the children. Sunday school? Thank you, like Sunday school. For nine years solid. He, he, could, he never missed a Sunday for nine years. But he didn't believe in Jesus. He didn't believe in Jesus. And he said the Bible was the greatest uh, something on earth. Like a, he made a joke about it. But now he said before he passed, his sister asked him to please believe in Jesus. And he said, I don't have to. You don't have to ask, beg me to see him. I've seen him. Okay, yes, thank you. He wants to go back. Okay, your husband yes. wants to go. What's his first name, please? Clayton. Clayton? He wants you to understand how many times. Number one, first of all, he didn't suffer as much as you think he might have suffered. Because guess what? He wasn't in the body. He wasn't in the body. How many times you might have seen him sleeping? And you're thinking, oh, he's resting and I won't, you know. He wasn't in the body. They allowed them to come out of the body. And, uh, and just like people that are in comas, they're not in that body in a coma. Can't tell a doctor that, but uh, they're allowed to come out of the body and get away from that. Suffering. I have a brother that was killed in a mountain climbing accident, and nobody, nobody knows what happened. There was only one other, he was with one other person. Okay. And he fell to his death. The other boy also fell, but he, the, the other guy broke both his legs and lost touch with my family. And... No, but it's like a mystery. Nobody knows. Well, the first thing he told me was that before he wants you to know, you said he fell off a cliff. Before the body, the body hit the ground, he was out of that body. He did not suffer. He didn't. Um, it's a surprise to them, too, because it's like, what's going on? Um... I always felt a very strong feeling that that, that was the case. That, that he did not splat. <laughs> like the body might have, but he was. He was he was out of the body long before that happened. Yeah. What I would suggest is, if you can, is we could do a reading over the phone and uh, let's tap into his energy and see what we can get for answers. If, if we can't get the answers, at least we can get, because that's another thing. Thank you, hon. Thank you. Jerry's reminding me to tell you that I'm an evidential medium. I'm not, I, I am a psychic, but I don't, I don't like to say that because it scares people and they don't want to talk about it usually. I don't want to hear psychic. So my evidential means if you get a reading from me, you need to know that the things that I'll be bringing through are evidence that I'll know what color you're wearing. I'll know what's on your wall of your room. I'll know if you're sitting on a couch, a chair. I can tell you what color that chair and couch is because that's what they give me. Now, Bob's had this happen to him. I've given him readings and uh, things I would never know. Things I would never know. Did somebody in this room accidentally set woods afire once or in a fire in the woods that you want to admit <laughs> was that an accident did you do that i didn't do it <laughs> okay but but this person's this person's making me feel like uh, no I'm looking for somebody that lit fires. I set a field on fire with fireworks. Okay. 
They're telling me because you act actually did set it afire on purpose, but you didn't mean it to get out of. Right. You felt really bad about that. You oh, felt yeah. really bad. Okay. <laughs> Jim, we should save some time for you to do book signing. Yeah. Well, I can't even thank you all enough. Thank you so much for uh, putting up with my whatever. I'd love to. See, I'd love to come back and see you again sometime. Mm -hmm.